welcome. My name is Florian Hahn and I'm uh, leading the working group of post mining exploitation at the Fraunhofer IEG. And today I would like to give you a brief overview of our mine thermal energy storage project in Bochum. Here on the right hand side, we see uh, a picture of a visitation mine in Witten that's very close to our situation or location in Bochum. And this is a similar layout of a uh, small colliery which we drilled into. So just to give you a brief indication of how it would have then looked like uh, once it was still open in the 60s. And this visitation mine is still uh, possible to visit. So um, it gives us a good idea of what we were uh, drilling into at our site. Uh, why is it not working? Okay, we are located in North Rhine-Westphalia, which is uh, in Western Germany. And in North Rhine-Westphalia, Bochum is more or less situated in the center. And in Bochum itself, we are more or less located in the southeastern part of Bochum, close to the Ruhr University and uh, the Bochum University of Applied Sciences. This is our campus. Uh, we also have two other mine water projects in um, Bochum. Uh, we just finished uh, drilling two wells into the Dunbaum colliery, and we also have uh, a long-term running mine water project at the colliery Robert Müser, which is using uh, mine water since 2014 from the mine water drainage site. But um, today I will also give you one brief slide uh, regarding our uh, Dunbaum project, because just last week we were able to finish the second well that we drilled into the, oh, sorry, oh, what happened here? Sorry. Uh, uh, we were just able to finish our second well, which was drilled into the eighth level of the Dunbaum colliery at a depth of 882 meters. Um, on the, before that, we were also able to drill the first well into the fourth drift at a depth of uh, 339 meters. We encountered here 15 degrees uh, for the uh, second well. We don't really have a clear temperature measurement yet, but we're anticipating temperatures in the area of around 30 degrees. So uh, we also had to utilize the deviated well plan and everything worked out quite well. So we are very happy for um, yeah, pushing forward this mine water project in Bochum. This is just a short update on this project, but now I will shift to the main project in um, at our IG side. Just uh, one slide for overall motivation. I think I don't have to go into detail here. It's just that we also in Germany are using over 50% of our energy demand for heating and cooling purposes. Uh, the renewable uh, energy sector in that part is quite low so far. And in order to increase this part, we need to have some sort of storage capabilities. And one idea is to utilize old uh, abandoned mining infrastructure for those uh, storing applications of heat. Um, here's some brief facts about the small colliery that we drilled into at our own site. Uh, it was operating in the 50s between 1954 and 1957. Overall, it produced 70, uh, 37,000 tons of coal. Um, the expectations were not fulfilled, so it was closed down in 1948. It was quite a small operation. Daily operations was only, or production was between 40 and 50 tons. And here you can also see, this is a picture from the visitation mine in Witten that are, I already described previously. Here we can see the wooden construction. Please bear this in mind because you might see some resemblance later on in some of the pictures. Um, here we can see a picture of the surface the shaft installation, also wooden construction, quite simple operation. Um, just uh, a brief overview of the mine layout. Here we see the vertical section. Um, what we did in our project is we drilled two wells into the lower part of the mine at a depth of 74 meters below ground. This is also here. We can see we have quite deeply steeping layers of the coal um, uh, and also a local syncline and the strata dip is around 70 degrees. And we also drilled, drilled one well into the upper surface part of the mine, just below the, the water table um, to conclude our project uh, in Bochum. 
And this is just to give you an idea, okay, everything that's crossed off in the mine here is uh, backfilled with uh, yeah, waste rock. Um, so we tried to utilize the open part of the mine, uh, which was located more or less in the, in the drift number four of the, um, the small cold reef. This is another picture from a different visitation mine in Lower Saxony, just to give you an idea of the mine water flow in such a small coal reef. Uh, and yeah, it's just a nice picture I wanted to show in this presentation as well. And what we did also was uh, we performed a numerical modeling for our heat storage applications uh, with our partner Delta H in Witten. They utilize a quite large regional scale model. They also digitized um, the mine layout, and then they also included a fracture model into their um, simulation to actually have a, a very um, detailed overview of the thermal energy uh, distribution during the um, injection and production modeling. This gives you an idea about the overall um, model that was um, simulated in our project so we can see we're moving from the regional model into the local model we have the digitized mine model and we can also see the two wells uh, indicated here one is into drift number four and one is into drift number one so this is also indicating that we are in this local syncline and that was our base model for the next um, uh, simulations as well what is our heat source? We are utilizing a um, concentrated solar power plant at our site uh, with a power of 30 kilowatts. Um, later on, this will be also installed on, on top of uh, two new buildings. And in the future, we also want to couple this system with a high temperature heat pump. So this is just a general lookout um, on the future um, constructions. Um, this is a picture during the installation of the panels, which we did last year. And this is a video of the operation of the panel. So the, the panels can move accordingly to the position of the sun. And then water is circulated in the middle part of the, of the piping and then heated up to temperatures of up to 90 degrees. And that water can be used to be stored underground in the mine thermal energy storage. Um, yeah, I think the biggest tackle in this project was to get all the uh, legal approvals ready. So we had to, to, to sign a liability agreement with a mine owner. And then we had to kind of uh, find out who's actually um, accountable for getting our permits ready. And in the end, we had to get our permits from the, mine, uh, from the water authority because we are in a storage application. And... Um, for the mining part, we didn't really need any permits because we our wells were below 100 meters. And in Germany, then you don't really need uh, a mine permit for those wells. So in the end, the, the lower uh, water authority was able to give us a permit for a pilot testing of the thermal energy storage part. Here we have some pictures of our well site in Bochum. Here you can see our drilling rig. Um, this is a PVC casing that we installed. This is during the operation and of the drilling of our first well. Here we installed um, one of the packers that was utilized for the cementing. And here we are running the PVC casing. We didn't really utilize any uh, rotary steerable systems for drilling down. We just had uh, drill collars and stabilizers. And with this, we were able to, to hit uh, three out of three wells into the mine and our vertical displacement was below 20 centimeters from the uh, vertical axis towards our um, target point. You can see just a technical drawing. So we're pumping mine water from one of the wells, circulating it through the heat exchanger. We're taking the heat from the CSP pump, uh, CSP plant, and then we're storing that heat in the underground part of our mine thermal energy storage. This is another picture from an aerial view. So we have our three wells on site, uh, two which were drilled into a depth of 64 meters, one in the upper part. They are connected with uh, district heating hoses to a central location where the heat exchanger is located. Here the CSP plant is located where we're extracting our heat from. So we're producing mine water from this side, 
putting it through our technical facilities and then reinjecting it in the second well and vice versa. That's also possible. Um, just to give you an idea about what we also did after we drilled the wells, we, we did a camera run. Here you can clearly see some of the uh, wooden fragments of the, um, um, of the mine construction. So this is a clear indication that we drilled into those open colliery drifts. And here you can also see, this is just an example of what we used for our installation in the well. We had a PVC casing with a diameter of 195 millimeters outside diameter. We have a slotted screen in the part of the mine. And here we can also see our um, cemented uh, packer. And once that hardened, we cemented all the way to the top. We also, we also installed glass fiber um, measurements to see the temperature distribution during the cementing to have a clear indication if we have a good cement job or not. So we see, okay, we have no um, distribution of temperature in the lower part of the packer. So that's a very nice indication that the, the packer is sealing quite well. Here we also have a downhole picture from the last well, and you can clearly see some wooden debris of, of uh, a wooden part where we drilled through. We were, um, these are some pictures of the cuttings from the last well. So we have uh, sandstone, siltstone, claystone, and uh, coal, where, uh, which we were able to uh, classify in our cuttings uh, here as well. You also see some wooden debris during uh, in some parts of the cuttings and also some very large parts of, of, the, of the wooden uh, constructions. So very nice uh, examples that we were really dead on target. Um, for monitoring, we are using also different monitoring wells outside our um, mine. We have four wells that are equipped with uh, temperature and uh, pressure sensors. And these sensors also measure the temperature distribution outside the mine so that we, sh that we are sure that our uh, temperature plume is not moving outside our anticipated area between those two wells here. Uh, at the end of 2020, we did a first heat injection test with a mobile heating unit. We were circulating 1,234 cubic meters for over nine days. Uh, we injected a maximum of 50 megawatt hours and surface temperature was uh, up to 60 degrees. Downhole, we could measure up to 46 degrees. So we were pumping 11 degree warm water from one well and then re-injected it in the second well. And um, here you can see the measurement of the injection well. So we have a sharp incline once we're starting the heat injection. Then we stopped over the weekend and we restarted the system. We have a a nice increase during those seven days of production. And once we stop, we have a sharp decline of our temperature, but we're still above our initial ambient temperature of 11 degrees. So that gives us an indication of our storage um, capabilities of the mine. And then we also took some of those uh, temperature data and, and took our numerical model and saw, okay, we have a quite a very good fit between our measured data of the temperature and our um, yeah, model data. And that data could also be used for calibrating our downhole uh, model. So with this, we are now able to go into the um, validation of what, what is happening if we're circulating uh, more volume between those two wells. So here you can see the, the distribution of our temperature plume during our um, first test. And this summer, we want to continue those um, injection tests with the heat from the solar thermal plant and also to increase our um, circulation rates. And that's very um, handy to have this calibrated model now in place. Uh, we also had some issues with the mine water scalings here, iron oxides. So we have to make sure no um, air is um, yeah, going into the system once we stop the pumps. That's still a problem we still have to tackle. And we also try to install, or we installed uh, monitoring devices on uh, surface shafts. So to monitor um, yeah, ground movements in that area. So we have a cement column, we have two inclinometers. So if this cement column is moving in, in the ground, then we have 
notification and then we can stop the overall system. You can see the device, it's operated with a solar, with a PV panel. Here you have the inclinometers, just to give us an idea if there's any ground movements at that part uh, happening at all. So then we can stop uh, the operation. This is where it was installed on our uh, part. Here you have the cement column, the inclinometers, and our operating unit, the control panel. And um, then you can see, okay, this is a normal uh, lookout that you have no uh, degree changes in your inclinometers. That looks very fine. But if you would have any changes, then we have to look and stop our operation and to see what's going on within the system. And then we're also doing one of the last slides, uh, an aerial overview um, with a drone to see if we have any differences of uh, ground movements in that area in the range of centimeters. So we're doing this every year to see if there's anything happening on the um, surface areas uh, regarding to our thermal uh, or circulation in the mine. So this is just um, yeah, a brief overview of our monitoring measures. And uh, what we are planning later on this year is we're utilizing the heat from the solar uh, thermal plant. We're storing it in our mine thermal energy storage. And then we want to utilize it uh, and test it with a high temperature heat pump to feed it in our district heating grid in uh, Bochum, in the southern part of Bochum. And this is done in the GGE rollout project, which is still continuing this year until um, September. So this is uh, the way forward for our project. And just a small outlook, um, just in the Ruhr area, we have almost 200 abandoned coal mines. So the potential is very high. So um, yeah, we need to have a yeah, transition of using this um, abandoned um, mining infrastructure in conjunction with the uh, district heating grid to, to reach our climate goals. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions. Um, look out.